Yo, yo, yo. Good morning. Welcome to Starbucks. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we got Jim Rosati. Top of the morning, Jim. Good morning, DiNardo. Nice of you to you you know, nice of you to join in. You're welcome. <laughs> you know what's funny? So um, I, had a, I actually had a dream last night that I overslept. You had podcast. a dream that you overslept. I had a dream that I overslept the podcast, and then I woke up at like seven thirty or something like that. And I, in the dream, I, I picked up my phone and I texted you, and I was just oh, like, wow. "Oh shit!" But turns out I was here on time. You were late. <laughs> yeah, you know what happened was I didn't dream. I overslept. <laughs> yeah. Um, luckily, I don't even know why I, how I woke up. I don't remember any alarms. I mean, it's Starbucks. You know how we go, right? It's always seven o'clock unless we right sleep in. It's scheduled for seven, but you should know that it's not going to be seven. Probably. If if you've yeah. been around these parts before, <laughs> you'll know that it usually doesn't, doesn't start on seven. But no, for yeah. real, I just like I don't remember any alarm going off. Nothing. I just happened to. Like literally consciously wake up mm-hmm. and look at my phone and saw it was like seven o'clock. You know, I'm like, what am I doing up? But then I saw the notifications and I saw a text in your name. And I was like, oh shit, it's seven, it's seven o'clock. Let's get going. So yeah. Yeah. But we're here. Listen, we're here. I'll say this for the yeah. very first reintroduction of Starbucks, right? We haven't done this since we've been on Pittsburgh baseball now. Yeah. This is our first because time. we've been usually we've been typically going every day, so we haven't had the need to do a Monday morning podcast. But this past week, I was gone for work, and we didn't do much because of that. <laughs> we all had busy weekends this week, but so yeah, a good time to to do it. But seriously, for it being the first time we've been doing it for how long? The fact that we started at what seven eleven. 715 ish, something like that. Not bad. 715. Yeah. We'll Not take bad. It. Yeah, we'll take it. So maybe we should get into this and start talking some Pittsburgh Pirates instead of gloating about how terrible we are. <laughs> yes. Let's do that. So, so speaking of terrible, <laughs> the 55 and 92 Pirates. Hey, there was history. They, they, they made history last yesterday against the Mets great yeah wonderful great. wonderful history they made history against the Mets yesterday they tied a uh, major league baseball record for the most strikeouts in a nine inning game and honestly they should have broken it in the ninth inning they they only struck out one time in the ninth <laughs> inning otherwise record would have gone down like they would they would have it all to themselves I mean just Typical pirates, you know, just can't come through. Jacob DeGrom, though, yesterday just mowed through this lineup, except for one guy. Eight-ninths of the lineup. Eight-ninths of the lineup. Should we talk about the player that he didn't mow through? Sure, let's do it. Are we allowed? Will that get us... Hate because God forbid we talk about the guy who's on pace for like you know a 30 home run 100 RBI season that's a bust that is just terrible and he's overhyped. And what are you doing talking about this guy? He's batting 199. Yeah, let's talk about him. All right, let's do that. Yeah, so oh no, Cruz, I guess I'll kick it off. I- <laughs> 
Speaking of kicking off, Odell Cruz kicked it off yesterday with a double. Yeah. Uh, let, let's let's say this. Like, I guess let's preface this whole thing. Yes, O'Neill Cruz has struggled mightily. Yes, O'Neill Cruz finally went to the leadoff role, which a lot of us have been talking about. Let's get him some lineup protection. Yes, since being there, O'Neill Cruz has dominated. And yes, in the last week, O'Neill Cruz has been ice cold. Jacob All DeGrom takes the mound. All of us. Get out of here, buddy. Yeah. Opens it up with a double. Ties it with a, with a, a, a home run. So kind of crazy. So Jacob, I mean, the stat came out yesterday. Jacob DeGrom has only given up leadoff base hits twice this season. Um, both have been to O'Neill Cruz. And, uh, and no, it, it was pretty, it was pretty incredible because, I mean, DeGrom dominated yesterday, right? I mean, so he, he goes those oh, five God. scoreless strikes out 13. And then he gets, you know, we get two base runners on in the sixth. And then next thing you know, three run homer, O'Neill Cruz, game's tied. So this whole dominant start by DeGrom, dude doesn't even qualify for the win now. <laughs> typical J- Jacob DeGrom. Typical, typical Jacob Mads. DeGrom. <laughs> doesn't even qualify for the win anymore because of uh, game tying three run homer by uh, O'Neill Cruz. And then that was it. DeGrom was pulled after that. So you, you say two guys got on base. One wouldn't happen to have been Jason DeLay, would it have? Jason DeLay and Zach Collins. So, okay, well, give props to Zach Collins, I guess. I'll do that. But again, like just once again, like Jason DeLay is just not a good player, but he just happens to find his way into good things at like all the time, I feel like. He has a, a 536 OPS. It's not good. But again, he was on base to have... Oh, no, Cruz, tie it up. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious here. So, so Jason Delay has 14 runs scored. In like the nine spot. He's gotten on base. 39 times. I'm not and really sure what like the average is. That seems kind of like- high. I feel right? like it doesn't seem too high. I feel like that seems probably about right. Like, I mean, especially in the ninth nine times. The ninth spot, you're probably getting hit in. Wow. I mean, think think about like a leadoff hitter. Think yeah. about like one of the greatest leadoff hitters. You're probably getting on base like right under 300 times. Like the greatest. Maybe. Maybe. And you're probably scoring 120 runs in a good lineup. Right. And I guess. I guess that's about right. Yeah. So, anyways, right. but hey, I so he is nothing he special. Like, is basically always just saying. finds his way into the moment. You know, he, he's only get one hit, and it was that moment that he got his hit. Sure. But off oh, no, Cruz. Yeah, yeah, off the ground. But for real, oh no, Cruz. Like, I'm so sorry, and I'm I'm totally embracing this whole like Cruz call thing. Like, screw it. Uh, yeah. Be a lookout, cruise call, but yeah, like for real, like this whole cruise call thing. There's a reason. There's an absolute reason, and he's struggling, and he's a rookie, and he's allowed to struggle. But holy hell, can this guy? Like he's so just uber talented, and he like he literally could become something super special. Mm-hmm. And we don't yeah. know if he's going to be, but we're certainly here to find out. And it's things like this that's why. And like uh, you're gonna allow him to struggle. You're gonna allow him to struggle. That's what this season's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the strikeouts are clearly still an issue, right? Like he he basically seems to either at this point be striking out or hitting bombs. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's like where we're at. Um, Can, I'm gonna bring something up here for a second when you're done. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's. Yeah, and you mentioned it before, 30 homer pace. He's 299 plate appearances, 74 games. He's got 17 home runs now in his rookie season. He had, I mean, depending on how this last, these last couple, you know, there's what, three weeks left in the season. He's mm-hmm. six home runs behind Brian Reynolds for the team lead. Um, he, you know, he's second on the team in homers. He's only played 74 games. What he probably is going to do is he, 
catch up to Brian Reynolds in the team lead for RBIs. That's Reynolds crazy. With, Reynolds with 54, Cruz with 51. So Cruz, three RBIs off of Brian Reynolds, despite 251 less plate appearances. Uh, so like it, you just can't argue with like yeah you can keep you can tell me all you want how many strikeouts the dude has but the guy is producing runs like at an amazing clip he's he's like I said, he's been batting in the seven hole or the leadoff spot for the past you know three weeks and that's, this Pirates the offense, past three weeks it was just seven spots just one time by the way okay it was just one time. But no, that's what I'm saying. Like that's what's ridiculous. He's doing this in the leadoff spot on a team on a team that, that has doesn't Jason get on Delay yeah. and Zach Collins and Zach Meter, Van Meters, like all this in the seven eight nines. Like yeah. I, I want to bring this up he, in the past twenty games, right? So since he started in the leadoff spot, August twenty eighth, we keep going back to this date, keep putting out the stats. Twenty games he's played, twenty one RBIs. Like imagine you're on like hundred and seventy RBI pace. In the leadoff spot <laughs> on yeah. a bad team. Yeah. It's not clean up. It's not the third hole. He's batting leadoff and he's the RBI leader. Yeah. Like I said, the, how? At the end of the day, like people, I, I think it's funny because, like, with O'Neill Cruz, what's funny is, you know, he, you kind of. You can talk about the, the new age statistics about him a lot. Right. So you can talk about how his what his exit velocity is. You can talk about uh, sprint speed. You can talk about these statistics that you wouldn't find, you know, on the back of a uh, of a baseball card. Right. <laughs> but um, but when That's you also but at card, the same it? time, but it is. But at the same time, if you're just looking at the stats on the back of the baseball card, he's also pretty damn impressive like the the rbis the runs the home runs um all off the charts um so so like those the only thing right now that you can really get on him about is is the strikeouts right because the strikeouts is leading to his average being pretty low right his on base percentage not being as high as you'd like it to be right but as far as actual run production, the dude's doing it at a really good clip for a rookie who's played half of a season. Right. That's 100% correct. Like, mm. if this was a full season, like you're saying, you would, you, we all, and O'Neill Cruz needs to be better, right? You want to see better. You want to see the average up because the strikeouts are down. Also, because once he's at that level, that's that's pretty elite. But yeah, <laughs> if you were to see, like you're talking about the baseball card, at the end of the season, when you see 30 home runs and 100 RBIs as a shortstop for a rookie, like the counting numbers are just, they're all there. And again, I can't stress, this is a bad team. Like nobody on this team should have 100 RBIs. Mm-hmm. That's the pace he's at in the leadoff spot. <laughs> Like that yeah. is just like all the counting numbers are super impressive. And so like this is this is what I want to bring up. And I said, I'll let you finish. The irony, I think, in all of this is we are looking at Ono Cruz. And it's so controversial to talk about Ono Cruz because there's a there's a faction that's excited. There's a faction that says he's a bust, he's terrible, this is garbage, blah, 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 blah. Right. I think it's fair to say also that this is probably like his floor. Is that probably yeah. also fair? This is his floor. Yeah, he hasn't. I, I would say his floor was. I don't know if this right now what we're seeing is his floor. Okay. Are you sure? The power. The power is <laughs> damn good right now. That's so what I'm I, saying, but we knew see, the power is good. I could see the power maybe not being this good. Okay. I mean, just to kind of give you an idea, he was called up on June 20th. Since June 20th, 
uh, he has 17 home runs, which is tied for the major league lead in home runs by a shortstop. Uh, Willie Adamas also has 17, who, by the way, is having just an incredible season with Milwaukee. But uh, 17 home runs. batting average, for by the way. 259. Oh, I thought it was worse. Okay. Adamas. Top so, of my head. But oh, I'm talking about since June 20th. So I'm just looking at since June 20th. Oh, right. Adamas, right, right. 17 homers. Cruz, 17 homers. But Cruz, more homers than Carlos Correa, Corey Seager, Bo Bichette, Francisco Lindor. Like, He's he, the power is insane. He is the second, uh, third most runs batted in of any shortstop since his uh, debut behind Adamas and Bichette. Like the guy's just flat out producing, and and again, like he's not. We're watching him, and we're like, he can do better. Like he can do better. Yes. Like well, we hope he does better, and at the same time. He has more homers than any shortstop in baseball since being called up. So I guess what I'm getting at here is I say floor. I mean, the power is there, you know, like really the strikeouts he has to cut down, right. To get better. Yeah. So ultimately I feel like this is probably O'Neill, like at his worst that we're, we're seeing O'Neill Cruz. Right. And that I find to be ironic is how many people hate on it and say he's a bust, but Jim, you know what? If there was a player who was doing this in the major leagues, we probably would say that's his absolute ceiling. And look how he actually became a major leaguer in spite of the strikeouts being an issue. And that's yeah. Mason Martin. If Mason Martin was here and he was doing that, uh, uh, let's be honest right now and call it out. Like if Mason Martin was doing this, you and I would say, I didn't expect this for Mason Martin. If he, this is literally what we're talking about. If Mason Martin could do, if you could live with this 40K, 40% K rate that he's probably going to have as a major leaguer, but he was doing this, you know what? Mason Martin did it. <laughs> and we would be praising Mason Martin and saying how he's doing what you expected him to kind of hopefully do. That That's his ceiling. Right. But instead, the person's name's O'Neill Cruz, and it's he's a bust. And he's a shortstop. <laughs> and he's an and he's a shortstop. Like, like let's he's a shortstop. <laughs> he's a 3100 shortstop. Yeah. No, I mean, let's say it's gotten to, I, I said it the last, I don't know if it was the last time I was on or, or two times ago. Like, I'm done. I'm done uh replying to the people in my mentions. You know, I, like yesterday. I forget what I tweeted out, but you know, it was like pay pay the guy, right? Like, oh, uh-huh. like let's extend this guy this offseason. It needs to be a, it money. needs to be a main priority. Um, and like five people are like, yeah, but he'll strike out two hundred and fifty times a year. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Like, obviously, I wanted to strike out less, but, like, the dude's going to hit 35 homers over the course of a full season. He might hit 40. Shit, he might hit 50. Like, if he keeps getting better. Like, the guy's power, it's unreal. I haven't seen this much just raw power out of a Pirates player ever. Ever. Ever in my lifetime. I haven't seen this type of raw power. I guess when you think about like our lifetime, you talk about like raw power. Uh, I mean, the first thing that goes to my head is like, you know, Pedro Alvarez. Uh, I mean, that guy, I mean, he was, there's a reason called, he's called the bull, right? Yeah. This is, this isn't Pedro Alvarez. No, it's not. <laughs> like, this there, is. There's a reason why Pedro. people talk about the exit velocity. Like, there's a reason why that is a thing. There's a reason why it matters in a sense of Ono oh, Cruz. And it's just like you're saying, it's, he has, if you talk about Major League Baseball now and raw power, like he, he's top three right now. Like it's Giancarlo, Aaron Judge, and like Ono yeah. Cruz. Yeah. That's where he's at. Like he's already there. So, yeah, if he can become a better hitter instead of just a talent, then again, I'm not comparing him and saying he's Aaron Judge, but like, 
he's already got all this stuff. Aaron Judge is going for a freaking battle title right now almost, okay? A triple crown. Not saying Ono oh, Cruz is ever going to go to that level and have the hit tool that Aaron Judge has, but that's like what he's missing in the tool shed. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> like literally, that's it. Actually, he's probably got better speed. I mean, he clearly has better speed than Aaron Judge and a better arm than Aaron Judge also. Yeah. And he's a shortstop. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and, and I think Aaron, like people bring up the Aaron Judge comparison a few d- reasons. You know, they're both six foot seven or, or some crazy. Yeah. Six, seven. Right. Um, the, the difference here, and, and they're, you know, Judge struggled his first time in the majors, like strike out, struggled mightily. Struck out 44% of the time. He was worse than Cruz in that regard. He hit 179 his first season. Um, but then, like, he started to put things together where he started walking a lot more. Um, you know, he cut down the strikeouts to, like, a 30% area. And then that's mm-hmm. when you got, you know, Aaron Judge, the superstar, right? And so I think that's what we're saying. Like, O'Neill Cruz right now, the, the raw power is just incredible. The strikeouts, I think he's at 38% currently, which is high. Like, you know, that's pretty dang high. Yes. Um, but, like, if he's also only 23 years old. He's younger than Aaron Judge was when Aaron Judge struggled, you know, in the for his, his first time in the majors. Um, and you're already seeing, especially the last, you know, calendar month or so, Cruz looks a lot more comfortable up there he does yeah i mean despite this last week he struggled you know the past like five six games or whatever um but he he looks a lot more comfortable to play now you know over the this period of time than he did in his first few uh months in the majors um but where i'm going with this is if cruz can just get that strikeout rate down a little bit to the third let's say i mean i know we talk about like if he can get to 25 if he gets a 25, then you're talking about a perennial MVP caliber talent here. Like, that's For sure. I mean, if mm-hmm. he's putting the ball in play 13% of the time more than he is now, you're looking at someone who's going to be hitting 280 with like a ridiculous slugging percentage and 50 home runs, right? Um, I, I think, honestly, if he can just get to the 30 ish range, then you're looking at an incredible baseball player. Uh, obviously you want that strikeout rate to be as low as possible, but uh, I, I mean, I just don't know how you can look at him right now and just immediately start criticizing him. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, every, everything that he's doing is what you, you would want him to be doing. Uh, he, like I said, the, the power is just on un, unreal. Um, and I can't wait to just see what he does over the course of a full season next year. After an off season where he can step away from the game, he's seen, he's had his struggles in the major leagues. He's seen, we got to do, we can work on things. And that's again, like that's, what's encouraging about this also. And I think like I want people to take this away from it. Right. Because you see all the tools, you see all this stuff, right. He has to become a complete baseball player to get uber excited. Like when we can consistently have this excitement because he's actually doing this stuff. Right. So, you know, things that stand out though, when you look at him compared to, and this is all the stuff we talked about. Okay. And like, this is where a lot of his struggles come from. He still chases pitches. Right. So you look at him compared to like major league baseball players. He chases about 32% of the time league average is 28. So he chases at pitches that are outside the zone. Problem is too. He just doesn't swing at pitches in the zone. We talk about how like, he just takes so many pitches and why. Like get up there, be aggressive. Like he's only swinging at fifty-two percent of the pitches in the zone, Jim. That's it. Where league average is sixty-eight percent. Like he's just simply not swinging at these yeah. pitches that he should. Because and again, like you're talking about the the home runs. I mean, if he connects with more these fastballs coming down the middle of the plate that he's watching go by. I mean, how many more home runs could he possibly have as well? And that batting average goes up. So, you know, I I would love for him to get some real work. I'm still very indifferent on this hitting coach with Andy Haynes, and I feel like he probably should be gone. Um, And maybe he gets some real work with a real hitting coach. 
and comes back next year and is you know this more finished and polished product. Um, but yeah, like those are some things about Uno Cruz. Like, he's still just doing that. Like it's and it's 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 a big difference. You know, you're only swinging at 52 percent of pitches in the zone for a guy like Uno Cruz. That shouldn't happen. That mm-hmm. shouldn't happen. You know. And I see. I feel like he gets himself. Like the good thing is, is he is working counts. You know, we keep talking about how many full counts he gets himself into. But he also maybe doesn't need to get himself into full counts anymore either. Like it shouldn't be o two, and then he works into a full count, or you yeah. know, one on one and full count or something. So you know, I would love to see him, but get a little bit more aggressive, start swinging at those pitches that are right down the middle, and of course, pitch recognition. You know, is part of that. Um, but yes, um, just like uber excited about Ono Cruz right now as a shortstop hitting 30 home runs 100 RBIs but you know who else I'm really excited about Jim who else Ono Cruz light if I must keep saying that because he just keeps impressing me as well even though yesterday he went over four for Rodolfo Castro everybody went over four yesterday well, except well, Cruz not everybody <laughs> But eight nines did. Yeah, yeah. But for yeah. real, like Rodolfo Castro, I feel like we we have this conversation time to time, and you know you're in on it a lot earlier than I was. But I'm like, eh, I, I just need to wait and see because things scream out, but it's still short sample, and it still is today. But it's like the more and more I watch this kid, I'm just like, damn, I cannot imagine an O'Neill Cruz, Rodolfo Castro, middle infield. The potential that's there, what this could be. And the more and more you watch it and see it, mm-hmm. the more and more like it seems like it could happen. The tools for Rodolfo Castro are also, I'm not going to say off the charts, the Cruz is off the charts, right? His are still on there. You can read it. But in reading it, you say, wow, there's a lot of talent there. And like the power for Rodolfo Castro, again, not on Neil Cruz level. But it's there too. How many how many times do you keep seeing these monster shots? It's like, oh, that's a fly out because it's like four hundred feet in the air, and then yeah. it just goes over the wall. <laughs> his his forty was at one launch angle, forty six percent. The power is legit. Also, now he I would say he's got so far a bit better of a hit tool than Ono Cruz. He walks a bit more, strikes out a lot less, right? But. Are we potentially seeing this middle infield that could hit 50 plus home runs? I mean, 60 even out of the question, maybe. So uh, I just did the quick math. O'Neill Cruz hits a home run approximately every 16 and a half at bats. Um, oh, Cap- that's all? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and then and Castro is about once every 20 and a half. So, like, you kind of mentioned, like, yeah, power's there, but just, like, a little bit less than Cruz. But like, mm-hmm. home run every 20 and a half at bats, that's a home run every five games, right? <laughs> um, you spread that out over the course of a season, that's 30 home runs for Rodolfo Castro, right? Uh, so, yeah, we talk about, like, the potential of what this middle infield could do playing a full season together and really just not even getting better, just like doing what they're doing now, but like over a course of a full season, you're talking about Castro, 25 to 30 homers. You're talking Cruz, 35 to 40 homers. That's just incredible power out of, out of your middle infield. Um, (laughs) <laughs> and it's nothing that we've ever seen before here in Pittsburgh. Like we just haven't, we, we've never seen shortstops with pop, right? Jordy Mercer okay. hit 14 homers one year. I think that was the most really in our lifetimes. Arky Vaughn's 19 is the most ever out of the position. O'Neill Cruz is likely going to beat that this year in just like 85 games. Right. Um, and, and Castro, I feel like, like, like Castro, I think, could at least be, as far as production-wise, if we're kind of comparing him to another second baseman, like, I don't see how Rodolfo Castro can't produce like Neil Walker at this point, right? And, like, if you get Neil Walker-like production out of Rodolfo Castro, and I'm talking, you know, more power than Walker, but, clearly, you know, when you, when you like, look at the numbers and weighted runs created plus and all that, like I, I see 
I see a Neil Walker type player where, you know, overall an above average hitter, but out of, you know, out of your second base position, like you'll take that all day. So like when you talk about, we've never seen this, you know, in Pittsburgh, uh, I just feel like forget even just the middle infield talk in general, like just think just the power in itself, the closest you saw, and we talk about Pedro Alvarez, who was the home run king one year, which what 37 home runs was it? I think the 36 or 37 it was one of the two, but regardless, right. He was the home run king the one year, 36, 37, right? So he was the home run king. Pedro Alvarez. Yeah. And then he would say probably Cutches, you know, up next with like his 20 something. So that's that's like your third baseman, which should have power and like a, you know, a center fielder, which, you know, mm-hmm. Andrew McCutcheon was an MVP player. You expect that type of production. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about we've never seen this in Pittsburgh. Like we've never seen, I feel like we've never seen an Ono Cruz in Pittsburgh, as you mentioned. Right. And he's a shortstop. And and like the counterpart, like who could be second in home runs is your second baseman. <laughs> that that's just impressive like just the combination the closest you've seen of what this could be and again it's all potential right but that's why we're salivating at this because the potential of what this could be power wise so take a step back put words in our mouth power wise the closest we've seen is like kutch and and pedro <laughs> yeah power wise and that's coming right. from your middle infield that's coming from your shortstop and second baseman and again, like with Rodolfo Castro, I'm sitting here and I'm still like the book's out. I'm still not ready to go all in, but I'm seeing this now. And since his last recalls, we keep going back to it. It's now 144 plate appearances since then. So like the sample size is lengthening, right? There's, it's, it's getting, getting more bigger. and more sustainable. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. 132 ways runs created plus. Now, before he actually went over four, since his time up, it was, oh God, now I forget. I tweeted out there. It was the like 13th, I think, highest weighted runs created plus in that time frame. Um, it was up there. It was like up in there. all of baseball. In all of baseball. Rodolfo Castro. Actually, I think it was nine. Take it back. I think it was nine. I think it was the ninth best hitter since his recall. I think you're looking up the numbers. That's good. So I'll go back on it. But since it's time up, 261 batting average, 313 on base, 530 slugging. 144 ninth, plate appearances, 939. 39th, 39th best in base. Wade runs created plus? Yeah. Qualified? Yeah. Since August 9th? Yeah. That's what your tweet said. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, then, then you're correct. If that's what my tweet said, then you're correct. And that's where the nine came from. I just forgot the 30. Just a small number. <laughs> okay, so 39th best. That's what it was. Um, my, that's, that's good. <laughs> uh, so, like, Rodolfo Castro is really making me wonder. And I think that's, like, that's a good thing. Is he the future of the second base? And once again, this... The, the ceiling, is, like, no one has a ceiling with him right now. Honestly, like, if you look at, like, Nick Gonzalez, look at the guys that you expected to be the second baseman, right? Because I don't think anyone was, like, looking at Rodolfo Castro, especially after last year's call-up and everything, like, the future of this team, right? And, like, you look at the, the ceilings of a lot of these guys, I think Castro crumbles them. If he hits it, it's one thing. I think um, I'll disagree with you a little bit there. Like I would, I would say Nick Gonzalez's ceiling from just an overall productivity level is higher than Castro's. Okay. Um, but Castro is essentially the exact same age as Nick Gonzalez. He's doing this in the major leagues, whereas Gonzalez is still in Double A. Um. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, like right now, you have to move forward. Like if you're looking at a depth chart, like a potential depth chart here, like there, there's, I'm not supplanting Castro right now. Like I know it's only been 144 plate appearances this year, but I mean, we're looking at now, he's had 315 over the course of his major league career because he had almost 100 last year, too. Mm-hmm. And, 
He's essentially been a league average hitter because last year he wasn't very productive at all. But, you know, you no. combine that with this year. Been essentially a league average hitter. He's got 15 home runs in his 315 plate appearances. Um, his, you know, his defense yesterday was pretty shaky. Uh, but I think he's a lot more comfortable in that second, second base position than he is at shortstop. Uh, he's played a lot better second base than, than he has at shortstop. So you know, he sure. made, he made some errors yesterday, but overall, you know, he only, his, he, and I know errors aren't really the best way to look at it, but you know he had five errors in his 19 games at shortstop. Uh, he's got five errors in his 23 games at second base. So it, I guess it is quite a few errors. But, uh, you know, from like a metric, defensive metric standpoint, you know, they don't hate him in the field. Uh, and I think we've all seen his tools in the, the infield, both at shortstop and second base, right. where like he's got some crazy good – talent there defensively it's just a matter of putting it all together it, and again similar story to Cronel Cruz, Cruz. You know. that that's the, the things but that's the encouraging part the things that you see could be cleaned up I'm not saying they will but they can be you know it, it's not for a lack of talent or effort or ability for those two some actual coaching up could help clean this stuff up and they could become better and that's what you're hoping to see out of them. And so, like, yeah. once again, with Rodolfo Castro, he certainly makes his mistakes <laughs> all around. We're not even talking about just defense right now. Mm -hmm. But with the tools and everything you're seeing, like, he is just uber-athletic also. And could he become a good defender? He could. I could see it with him. You know, I can see it because he makes some of those spectacular plays. It's just that he also makes some of these – Easy plays or, or, or dumb, you know, boneheaded plays that, again, with yeah. more coaching could be cleaned up, eliminated, and you've got a really good plus defender on your side. So, again, like I'm, I'm very ex <laughs> for what this offseason is probably going to be. We're probably going to be pretty disappointed with things. I just have that feeling, right? So I guess with our takeaways, things to be excited about, because that's what like, this year was about, right? Well, it's, this year's going to mm -hmm. suck, but at least there's O'Neill Cruz coming. There's Rowanzy coming, right? I feel like next year it's going to be part of the story is O'Neill Cruz and Rodolfo's here. How do they develop? What can they be? I I'm excited for that potential, man. I'm excited for that. I really hope this team does something during this offseason because I think there are there are easy ways to fix some of the problems on this team. Like get a first baseman who's actually good. Get a it's not that difficult. Get some corner outfielders who can hit. Um, <clears throat> and, and maybe like you know, maybe you get one starting corner outfielder out there, and then the other one you just say, "Hey, Swinsky, Mitchell, fight it out." You know, you get your third outfield spot. I, I'm actually okay with. I'm actually okay with that. I think. Um, now, both of them need to be able to hit more. You know, if you want to be able to compete, like you can't have a corner outfielder who's just a league average hitter. Like that's not good. Like your corner outfielder right. needs to be a, a good hitter, right? It can't uh, be. Which he wasn't even like league average, but again, like and this thing too, like it can't be these scraps. It can't be. It can't be the leftover. That's what no. go to. Like it can't. Yeah. It can't be. Like this team does need some role leadership. Like I've been just clamoring on that because that's what it needed this year, and it didn't happen. You know, like, again, like I can't stress enough. Brian Reynolds is your guy, and he's seen five losing seasons. We're going to be five after next year. 600 plus games of losing seasons with a shortened season after next year. Like he's done nothing but lose. And I'm sorry. Like this isn't like against Brian Reynolds. Yeah. But you have done nothing but lose. You can't teach the ways of winning. You know, because Brian Hayes is like these, these internal leaders right now. I worry. Like again, like I worry about Brian Reynolds. All he's done is lost. That takes a mental toll. When are you going to start bringing in some guys that have seen winning, some real veterans, but are actually good too? That are actually you know, good. like right, right. 
there's a well, there's a difference between just that bringing in a, a, a veteran and bringing in a good veteran, right? right? And you see, just like Jose Quintana, like what he did for the Pirates pitching staff. Like obviously, they, they all like he was the leader of that pitching staff, uh, and you could tell like whenever the Cardinals came back in town, like every starting pitcher was they they used Quintana's walk up, you know, intro music because you know that that's what he what he meant to them. So like right. having someone like that on the pitching staff and you've seen the pitching staff, at least a couple people on it, kind of take that next step where, you know, Mitch Keller is now a good major league starter. Like I, I, I trust Mitch Keller out there on the mound and I trust Mitch Keller's name being written in ink in next year's rotation. Right. Um, you know, Ro- Ronzi Contreras came up to the majors and immediately fit in, right? So JT Brubaker's gotten better this year. Someone who definitely has shown that he deserves a spot in a major league rotation. So you've got these three guys who, you know, clearly show that they belong. And I think, I don't know if you can necessarily just shrug off that Quintana had nothing to do with that. Like maybe like being able to see a 10 year major league veteran is how he goes about doing his business is is good it's like if, if in, in any job let's say you get a job just in the real world and you're not an athlete like being able to see someone who does what you do he's been doing it for a really long time and he's good at it seeing that person work and do their job over and over and over again you just pick up things that you use in your daily routine you know going mm-hmm. forward and and like i said baseball is no different than than, than going to any other job in that asset and then in that aspect like you you look at the people who have been doing this for a while and are having success and you're like hmm what is he doing that i could also do there's that yeah and like there's a thing too like being coached at and being coached with you know and that's the one thing like with coaches and stuff I mean, honestly, this goes back to just the simplest. Think about, you know, your parents, like your dad coaching you. You, you know, how many times you go to a coach or something, your dad's always like, "That's exactly what I told you to do. How come you can do it?" It's because it's your dad. Like you don't want to listen to them, you know. And I'm not saying like they don't want to listen to Sheldon, but you know, like he's the coach. There's not that relatability where the player that's doing it right next to you when he starts talking, saying, "Hey, you know, watch this, do this," and you're like, "Oh, let me do that." Like, there's just something with that. There really is. And again, like the being coached at and coached with. Like, yeah, you're telling me what to do. Great. You also started Josh Family yesterday. Screw you. <laughs> right. You know, I'm not going to listen to you. But then there's the guy next to you. I'm like, hey, man. Hey, hey, kid. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do that. Watch me. And you're watching your tenant. I'm like, oh, that's Jose Quintana. Let me watch him. Let me see what he does. Right. And yeah. again, like, I, I keep going. I sometimes keep. I don't really stress this too much, but like something to stress. That's why I feel like AJ Burnett was so fundamental in that rebuild. Like th- he was probably one of the most important players in that in total rebuild because he mm-hmm. wasn't the greatest and he turned out being fine, <laughs> yeah. which was more yeah. than anyone expected. But like his mentality that he brought to that clubhouse, like I just felt is really like one of the biggest cat- uh, catalysts in that in that rebuild like you had him you had that leadership you had that mentality and boy is a bulldog mentality as well and that team fed off it and you, you don't see that from a pitcher but like that time they needed that person like again it was andrew mccutcheon who's been here who's been losing it's neil walker who's been losing mm-hmm. aj burnett comes in he's like guys this is how we do it like we're not having any loser mentalities around here if you do you can stfd <laughs> right right and like that's what this team doesn't have. It's a bunch of guys that are running around saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and, yeah. and you're seeing like it happened on the field. Literally, they don't know what to do. And maybe if you had some real quality veteran players there, they might know what to do. Yeah. And what's funny is like, I've kind of done a complete 180 on this. Like if you asked me 10, if you asked me 10 years ago, how important veteran leadership was on a baseball team, I would have said it means absolutely nothing. It's just all the most talented baseball team and the team compiled of the best players is going to win. Uh, but I've kind of shifted my t- tune there a little bit in that, you know, you don't need a team full of veterans, but you need some people out there who, who are leaders. Like you need leaders on the field 
and you need people who know how to win and you need people who have done it before. Um, and now right. like you don't, you don't need to have a, an entire team of them, but you've got to have some people sprinkled in that your guys look up to and that your guys are going to look at in times when they, they need some sort of direction. Exactly. And, and that's so like, I don't want to, we're going to move on. We're going to get to our next topic of Mitch Keller. Right. I, I, but I, I just want to say real quick, and this doesn't just stem from the Cabrian Hayes issue. We're not going to talk too much about that. Right. But it's just, when you see things over and over again, like Rodolfo Castro, who gets brought up a lot because of the cell phone, right? Like you see all this stuff, you know what? Maybe you wouldn't have to expose these young inexperienced players because they're inexperienced and they have no one who's experienced to help them out in the clubhouse. You know, like, like maybe if this clubhouse had a guy who had that real true veteran leadership who actually knows how to win also. Yeah. Right. And again, like it's not because Greg Allen's 30 years old that he should be your leader. He's been a minor leaguer all his life. You know, like that's not right. age doesn't have anything to do with it either. But like you have a true veteran there. Maybe some of this stuff doesn't happen. But you're out there exposing your inexperienced players because no one knows what to do and they're all learning on the fly. <laughs> Maybe some of this stuff doesn't happen because it's like, hey, you know, it's not coming from Sean. It's coming from the clubhouse leader and he's bringing in cash and saying, what the F are you doing? <laughs> Don't do that again. You know, whatever it is, however that person relates. Again, like think about AJ Burnett. But if you had someone in there, maybe this stuff doesn't happen as often because they're learning the ropes and the ways and they're being more conscientious of things or whatever. Again, that's all I'm alluding to. Um, we can move on, but like protect your young guys with someone like that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if some of it, I mean, this, this, it could just be, maybe it's like a language barrier type thing too. Cause you look at, kind of the people who are making a lot of on field mistakes and doing things from time to time. And, and they are non-English speaking people. And you look at maybe Brian Reynolds is your guy who you would look at as far as a veteran leader on this team. And he doesn't speak Spanish. Right. So like if you're, if you're O'Neill Cruz or if you're Rodolfo Castro and you're, and, and you are looking for like that person that you want to kind of be your veteran leader in the clubhouse, I, the Pirates don't really have that from like a, from a Spanish speaking mm -hmm. standpoint. Um, I mean, I guess you could say Perez, but I don't even think Perez is even with the team right now. Like, that's a good point. Like he, you know what I mean? Like if Perez, was like if Perez a, were around and playing and like, he could be that guy, but they don't really have, they don't have a veteran um, Spanish speaking player on the team. <laughs> yeah. We well, could just start with veteran to begin with. <laughs> right. And, and I mean, like, yeah, somebody who's even just like an arbitration, like an arbitration eligible Spanish speaking <laughs> player. Is there one? I don't, I don't think I, there is. I mean, it was Quintana. Yeah. And Perez. Yeah. And that's all I can think of. Yeah. Even like the bullpen. I mean, the bullpen's all it's young. It's a hodgepodge. <laughs> it's a hodgepodge yeah. of nothing. Um, nice. So, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, that could be another thing where, you know, Castro and Cruz can't really go to Brian Reynolds with stuff. And Brian Reynolds can't really even go to them with stuff other than unless you're talking through a translator, which is just mm -hmm. it's it's not the same. You know what I mean? So. Maybe something to think about. Yeah, true. So. All right. Well, let's get on to the next topic, which we kind of were, but I deviated Mitch Keller, who you can ink in the rotation next year because he's good dude is i i'm just totally totally impressed with mitch keller like if you would have told me he had a turnaround this year i don't think i would have expected this to even be that yeah i mean I, let's see zips I, i'm trying to see like what his preseason projections were so the the best preseason projection we had was zips and zips projected him at a 1.2 war, 4.73 earned run average. And that was in 28 starts, 133 innings. So he's he surpassed his uh, innings projection. He's at 143 innings. His ERA is about 7, 0 0.7 points less than that best yeah. projection. His war is up to 2. His FIP and his XFIP are both below 4. 
the guy has turned himself into a bona fide like number three major league starter. He really has. Which, um, <laughs> which, which is great because like we, I had no idea what to think. This was his make or break year, right? Like he he needed to put up or shut up this year, and the start of his season, it looked like it was going to be bad, right? If if I had a thousand dollars and you forced me to make a bet off with a thousand dollars, and my two options were Mitch Keller was a bona fide number three starter, or Mitch Keller was DFA'd heading into twenty twenty three, I would have put that thousand dollars on DFA'd if I had to make a choice, and that was the only two choices that were there. Right? There's no in between. One of these two is going to happen. I probably put my money on the DFA, and like you yeah. said, at the end of April. I'd have been clapping. I mean, I'm in. I'm so smart. I'm the. I'm gonna be so rich, right? Mm-hmm. And since then, we keep going back. This this two seamer. Since he added the two seamer on what May 19th, that first bullpen session, and then his well, not session, but this first game out of the bullpen. And then he started starting again, right? Since that time frame, since he added the two seamer, 110.1 innings pitched, 3.26 ERA. So you're going since Mitch, May 18th. Mitch Keller. What's that? Are you going since May 18th? Yeah. Yeah. Did you want me to do the the no, next actual good. start instead? No, I just did that because that was the first time he did it. I know it was just yeah. a bullpen, but that was the first yeah. time he's he's done it. No, I mean, read those numbers again. So since May 18th, was when, which is when he added his sinker. Yep. 110.1 innings pitch, 3.26 ERA. 50.2% ground ball rate. 320 baby as well. Which I mean he's he's getting hits. Like people are hit, make not hits, but contact, right? Mm-hmm. And hits. But like that's that's what's been added to Mitch Keller. You know, he, he had to have strikeouts before, which he just couldn't do. He didn't have a put away pitch to do it. And guys yeah. are still getting hit on him. And now he can do it. He can induce the ground balls, the double plays. We're seeing the double plays, right? Like it's just and he can strike people out too now. Just, yeah. oh, here's 10 strikeouts in a game. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been a completely different person, and it's crazy just how, like, baseball is a weird game in that, like, just that one, that one tweak. Like, just, hey, throw your fastball like this instead of like this. Like, that one thing completely changed the – completely changed the trajectory of his career. Uh, so this month he's been great. Uh, 1.42 ERA so far this month and three starts. Uh, absolutely killing it. Yeah, defense hasn't been great behind him either. Defense hasn't been great behind anybody. This defense is pretty pathetic overall. Um, but yeah, it's just like he he made that change. He's and he's good. Like he's good to go. Like I have no concerns about Mitch Keller going the next year. Right. Now the one thing about yeah, like you you need to still have you need more Mitch Kellers because like I mentioned before, like he's not an ace, he's not a number two, like he's a league average starting pitcher now, maybe above average, but I would say above on a on a good team, like Mitch Keller is a number three starter. Yeah. Right. So and uh couldn't be couldn't be more thrilled. With that, because again, if the thousand dollar bet thing, this this the start of the season was so so bad. I thought that like, I thought he was done. Like, stick a fork in him. Mid May, this this guy, this guy's he's just not it. No, um, and he was not, a type two. You're thinking like yeah. a bullpen's probably not even an option for him. It's not as if like him going to the bullpen would make him a better pitcher. Nothing screamed that at all. He would just yeah. have the same issues in the bull. He would just be a bad bullpen pitcher too. Right. And it was just like, well, what are we going to do with this guy? Uh, but the fact that he's completely turned his season and his career around, mm-hmm. one of the brightest spots on the darkness that is the 2022 Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> yes, you are 100% correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and honestly, like we did talk about this beforehand. If Mitch Keller becomes a good pitcher, that changes so much because that's like one thing this – this organization is lacking is like real depth in, in pitching. 
Like, yes, you were hoping that Quintana, I'm kind of sorry, Quintana, that Priester, <laughs> Quinn Priester hits. You know, you're hoping Rowan Z hits. You know, we saw how good he was in Triple A. It's higher than, you know, Quinn was at the begin with. But like, you're hoping he's a good pitcher. Like, if Mitch Keller can be a good pitcher, that makes the world of a difference to this, this organization going forward. And he's done that. He's done that. So, like, you literally have like Roman Z, you have Mitch Keller, who like you feel comfortable, like two fifths of the rotation next year is is above competent. And again, just the, the bar is very low on that. But that alone is makes me feel kind of confident. Like, hey, at least we have two fifths. We just have to figure out three more. And you know, hey, JT Brubaker has done a pretty good job as well. So I'm okay with him for now. But Mitch Keller turning this round has been a huge thing. And like the other thing I'm gonna add to is He's getting stronger. So, like, those numbers I talked about, uh, let's also think about this. Like, he's never thrown the two-seamer. He had to, like, start doing it, and we saw the, the walks were up a little bit. Like, there were still good things to see. But, like, hey, that first start, he had, like, five walks in it, you know? Like, yeah. it was still not a finished product. I'm not saying it still is. But here's also something to put out there. Like, you talk about the last three starts. And just think about, in general, like, since July 6th, right? Since July so just give him June of like working the two seamer and becoming this pitcher. Since July, seventy three innings pitched at two point nine six ERA. Like he's 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 getting stronger. Like in each start, you you're now talking also like, hey, was this his best start of his career? <laughs> you know, think about again like the last four starts he's had have been fantastic, and it's just a carryover. Like again, like it seems like it's each start he gets, he's not breaking down. He actually is almost getting starter or stronger, which again is even why more encouraged I am for next season. Like now take this out. Now he like comes, he has an off season where he comes and walks away and says, I'm actually a good pitcher. And there's no, there's no arguing it. It's not, well, my FIP showed I was a good pitcher, but I got to prove myself this year. Right. Or it's no like, well, my ER is terrible, but actually my peripherals are good. So I got to prove myself. And then just everything is terrible. I got to prove myself. Like he actually can walk away and say, you know what? I'm a damn good pitcher. I got my confidence back. Mm -hmm. And had this offseason, we know how analytical he is. We know how much of a work. I mean, he, this guy had a trackman, I think, before any actual the Pirates organization had a trackman. In his own yeah. house, you know? Um, so, like, we understand what he has and what he wants to do. So now he takes away that in this offseason. He does that. Comes back. I don't know. Maybe next year we're talking about Mitch Collins at number two. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna say. I'm just saying. Like this is encouraging. If he pitches, if he pitches <laughs> the last, if he pitches a full season like he has the last three months, that you know, with a sub three ERA, then yeah, let you're you're bumping him up to that. And, and again, like this isn't saying like yeah, but yeah. like this is the stuff he's doing that you're encouraging. Maybe maybe this isn't even like what he is. Maybe there's still some more out there, and, and this is why I'm talking about. Yeah, this offseason, maybe he's even better. I don't know, but at any rate, this alone yeah. is good enough for me. No, I agree. And, and you, you typically see with pitchers, like they kind of they kind of start figuring out pitching, you know, kind of in that 27, 28, 29, 30-year-old range. And he's about to enter into that. So yeah, I mean, maybe we maybe we haven't even seen Keller's best. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. So, yeah. Another thing to but watch even, for next but year even if like if this is Keller's best, like let's say, you know, since May 18th or whatever, when you know he he added that since May 18th, if this is Keller's best, I'm happy. I'm with that. very happy. But like if he's if he's better than this, yeah, yeah, that's huge, huge for this team. So Mitch Keller, good. Cruz, Ronzi, the potential is sky high for that middle infield. Um, and I guess, how do you want to end this? You talk about the parts they swept and then got swept. Yeah, I mean, it was just, I, it was interesting. I mean, that Reds lineup that, and I know the Pirates lineup isn't necessarily like something to be excited about, but, um, you know, day in and day out. But those Reds lineups that we were facing, no, the, 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 those that was those, they were bad. The Reds are bad right now. Um, they even hit like so are we, but yeah, so it, it was crazy though. I mean, you get the four game sweep against the Reds, um, then you immediately go into New York and you get swept by the Mets. 
it's just one of those deals where this team, in order to beat good teams, everything's got to go right for this team. And, and they're just that it's hard for that to happen for these guys mm-hmm. right now, mostly because the lineup is so spread thin. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people in this lineup getting at bats who shouldn't be. <laughs> um, and, and there's some people who, you know, who should like, this is the time to play them type of deal, but they're like, let's, there, there are people on this team who are getting at bats and they just shouldn't be at this point. Yeah. Um, I mean, then, then, you're right. And then also that there's some that should be, and I mean, they're struggling, yeah. but they're allowed to struggle. That's what this year is going to be for them. Like from Jackson, a pitching he went over four yesterday with four strikeouts and that's not good, but yeah, you're, you're starting Jack Sawinski at this point. From a pitching standpoint, the bullpen is just completely awful right now completely awful uh so even when the starter goes five or six innings and you know pitches competently which they have been like for the most part the starting pitching has been okay even the bad bad people like bryce wilson sucks but bryce wilson only gave up three runs yesterday he only went four innings but like oh it's not like bryce wilson let the oh i'm, I'm talking about okay night before bryce yeah. wilson only gave up three runs Oviedo only gave up three runs. Like, so they're not letting like the wheels. I mean, fall luckily, off. he only gave up three right. runs. <laughs> they don't look good doing it, but they don't let the oh, wheels. Oh, no. Fall Wilson off. gave up four, no, four and 5.1. Okay. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, like, none of them are busting and giving up like seven or eight runs. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but I just look at this like, no. No. The starting pitching hasn't been the reason two, for losses. Two lately. fifths is, especially now because JT Brubaker is on the IL. Like it's Rowanzi and Mitch Keller, and after that, it's terrible. Now, this guy. But are they the yeah, reason why up. we're losing? Luis Ortiz is intriguing. We saw his one star, so Very maybe intriguing. maybe three fifths. But no, I mean, when you had again, Oviedo is a reliever. You've had Tyler Beatty have stars. I mean, no, like two fifths of the rotation has caused losses. I'm sorry. Okay, you're right. You started the game. Okay, they, two they, out of every five games, you started <laughs> saying this is going to be an L before you even right. began. You're right. But that has also more to do with the offense is not capable of scoring more than three runs, basically. Well, like, if you had an offense, you could score everything seven comes runs together. from time to yeah. time. Like, if you had an offense that could score seven, like, on a regular basis or six mm-hmm. or something like that, then you can still win some of those games with subpar pitching. But they, just, they can't do it if they don't. If That's they don't. Fair. If they if they don't give up less than two runs, they're like not winning a baseball game. Um, and, and a lot of it is just because the bullpen. The bullpen is just completely inept right now. They're, it's terrible. they're terrible. It's it's terrible. So so bad. Yep. Everyone's overworked. Everyone's just bad. Yeah. <laughs> Injured. Hey, David Bed- David Bednar's. I guess one more time in Indy and he'll be up hopefully this upcoming week. So which will help. Um, I just want to see David Bednar just to seeing his face will light up my day and not there you go. Dylan Peters or Chase Ooh. Dion. Well, Dylan Peters is gone now, but you yeah. know, like, yeah. yeah, even, even will crow to a point now. I mean, again, this is, I, I warned everyone. He's going to be very, very bad. He's going to have bad numbers at the end of the year, but it's not his fault. Not his fault. He has to go there and pitch four innings every day. And his numbers aren't necessarily bad. They're just normal. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, there's, there's still time. And yeah, there's come still time. August, October seventh, they probably will be. He's trending downward. That's for right. sure. Um, but yeah, I think right now it's just I'm excited to see more Luis Ortiz. Just you've got to be intrigued about the stuff. Starting pitchers just typically don't possess that kind of stuff. No. So yeah, I want to see more of that. Uh, looks like Brubaker still in like the fourth inning. Jeez. Yeah, Brew Baker's probably done for the year if I had to guess. When you put somebody on the 15 day IL with this much time to go, he's probably they're probably just saying, "Hey, just just shut it down, right?" Um, so so hopefully we get like maybe four. Luis Ortiz starts in 
before the end of the year. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe three, three starts. That's the positive. Um, like I never want to see people get injured. I don't want like, want people to get injured, but no. Brew Baker's injured. They said he's hopeful to come back, but I'm with you. Like, like why? Why do it? But I guess the bright spot of Brew Baker being injured is we do get to see Ortiz come back. Tyler and I were talking about like trying. You got to find a way to get this kid on this on this team again, make more starts, and this is the way of doing it, I guess. And I'm excited for that. He's going to get his his next start too against the Yankees on Tuesday night, so tomorrow night. So yeah, that'll be that'll be fun because he looked really intriguing his first time out. Yeah, he did. Yeah, now, here's I'm a challenge. Forward to seeing more of that. Here's a potential triple crown winner. <laughs> right. Go face him, kid. Yeah. If if anything, too, man, he just he looked the part. He he looked like he was very confident. He wanted to be out there. So I'm excited for this matchup. Like you had that you had that opening, you know, start in introducing the major leagues, which was very, very positive. And your second one's thrown into the, the New York Yankees. So I can't wait to see that game. Yeah, it's going to be a slightly better lineup than the Cincinnati Reds that he mm, faced his slightly. first time. Just slightly. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, it's 822. Want to get out of here? Yes, sir. All right. Well, Thanks for joining in You know, this morning, Denardo. You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. Lord knows you wouldn't be able to kick off the show if I didn't. No. No. Nope. I would have gone. All right. Pirates are off tonight. So we will be back tomorrow to talk about the Luis Ortiz perfect game against the Yankees. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. See you guys.